The yeah. covenant comes easier. I mean, the, well, I say it comes easier. The, the covenant is is um, it's we can articulate it a lot because we have constructs, we have we have dogma, we have theory because that they are faith kind of stated things. It doesn't mean to say people do them by the way, but but they're stated in that particular way. So it's 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 totally appropriate with one of the one of the the elements because we have a series of values that we put in front of the schools in their profile, and they are common good. They're, that's justice. Um, it's 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 community. We have another one in there called excellence, and it's a it's a it's a very barren one because you know, how, but how do you define excellence, which drives people into different, different processes? And, and we have we have. Just or set justice and common good and that, but then we then we come up with the, with, the, with the other one of a core value. Now, one that we actually use with the Catholic schools is basically catholicity. In other words, how how do you how do you express this in the values of your school? Now, I've done it with Lutheran schools and Anglican schools and those schools, and so my question there is, you know, Anglican or Lutheran, because, and I think it's important that we don't actually try and say that that. There's something, there's something which basically is is um, is superior about this. It's not superior. It's just different. And but but where you look for the difference is you look for the difference in how you value. In other words, does it impact on how you prioritise the valuing in your school? And I think that's a reasonable moral exercise to do it. Now we we come to the secular school. Most of, most of the values bases that we actually kind of discuss are exactly kind of the same. So when we talk about common good, and we talk about um, uh, the uh, uh, ind individual rights, and we talk about, and which is very, very Greek in their orientation, but then we talk about the nature of justice, and we talk about excellence, but then we come to the issue in terms of nature, we say any special, the, the, the special issues of, of character, and, and I did this with the government schools, and we just simply talked about character. And, and, and they, they kind of said, oh, gee, you know, I mean, are we start, starting to step into these kind of... Uh, so well, what do you think? And of course, what, what you actually expect is that most, most secular government schools have very strong opinions about what good character is. It may not meet the expectations of a multivariate community, um, which, and, and they are extremely kind of... Uh, that's the difficult thing, that, that, that you run the risk. But if, but if I'm not saying being dogmatic, I'm simply saying being, if you want reflective on what kind of person you think, and it does raise the issues of the nature of, you know, what we've heard about today, decency in terms of what it means to be decent, you know. Um, it's easy to argue the nature of justice. Well, I, I think you can argue justice a lot for, in terms of a value, but then when you start to argue something like being decent, which then kind of has a moral implication for, for um, how you interpret what goes on in the school, it's, it's just a little harder to put to, to put pen and paper about the nature of decency in a school that basically has to be very careful about prescribing um, one set of values against against another. Um, but for that, but whichever way we go with it, all schools I think have to go back to those values and those ethical processes because it's a, that otherwise you don't get to the moral purpose of what you're doing. So we can throw our arms at the fact and say, "Was well, you know kind of." It, it's a it's a pluralist it's a pluralist school it's a multi kind of it's and it's a complex issue because we have multiple communities here with multiple sets of values that's okay that's 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 just a harder a harder exercise to articulate what will be morally right for this particular community but it doesn't make it it doesn't mean it that we shouldn't be doing it I think we should be doing it but the rest of the model fits nicely into it um, that that one that part's harder. Then when we come to educative leadership, what should leaders be doing to make certain that this will grow amongst the others, the other, a teacher, and, a teacher. and then what is how we, how we define leadership, how do we define learning, which is that authentic learning process, and, and in the hope that this will actually change kids. Um, that's, they're, they're common. It's totally common to all schools. It, it's just that there are, there, are harder, there are harder questions that need to be asked. Of people when we're doing when you're doing your profiling at that base level, it it's um, and, and I find that an interesting it's, it's an interesting question for me because I do as much work in government schools as I do with Catholic schools in Australia, and people continue to ask me say, well, gee, you know, can we do this? And I say, if we can't do it, we're doomed. <laughs> we're doomed if we can't do it. And if we can't do it simply because basically we're government schools, then it raises the whole question about why we should have them. 
because if, if, if being a government school removes the actual priority of the, the, of the concept of moral literacy and of being a morally faced, based process, well then we're just, we're just actually kind of, we're, we're, we're child mining institutions, you know, the kind of, that attempt in some way to just process information into them in, 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 to, towards the nature of some form of career orientation and employment. We're not really about growth of, of, um, of the character of the kids and in terms of their own, their own moral growth or a better society. And, and I, don't, I, don't, you know, I, don't, I don't affirm to that at all. But I take the other thing as I think our government schools. And I also have a particular perspective because I think that our, our private schools will only be as good as our government schools. I think our government schools set the, they set you, they set the, the tone and the base from which others move. And they, we can't afford we can't afford to have a government system that doesn't address this this whole per, this issue of moral purpose. What are the, the kind of the core values? Otherwise, we're giving up. And I think that's a that's a, that's a very pessimistic kind of approach, and it's a bit frightening because it's a, almost a defeatist a defeatist approach. I'm I'm a pop, you know, I'm an optimist as well, and, and I like to say to the schools and I go and work with them. Well, let's try. Yes, we've got. We, yes, we've got Muslims in here, and we've got we've got people from no kind of faith based. You've got some, but that's not a critical issue. What do we want to try and be to all of these kids, and what would we want these kids to all do? Like, so some of these schools come up with the issue of self-respect. You know, how, how do we build respect amongst the school community? And and they articulate it beautifully um, because they see it as a critical issue of building in those kind of processes, and, and that's that's and, uh, yeah. So that's. I think it works, right. and I think it can work for all schools. And but my point is, if it doesn't, we've got a problem. <laughs>